Egypt and Exodus, Covenant and Worship, Israel's Identity Formation, The Transition from Slaves to a Chosen Nation. The journey of the Israelites from Egypt to the wilderness marked a significant transformation in their collective identity. Once a group of slaves under Egyptian rule, they were being molded into a distinct nation under God's guidance. This period was critical in the fulfillment of the promise made by God to Abraham. Formation of a unique national identity. The wilderness journey was about more than physical relocation. It represented a profound change in how the Israelites viewed themselves and their role in the world. They were being shaped into a nation with a unique identity and purpose, a distinct from other peoples and cultures of their time. Becoming a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. One of the key aspects of this new identity was the call to become a kingdom of priests, priests and a holy nation. As stated in Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, this calling set the Israelites apart, not just in their relationship with God, but also in their societal and ethical structures. They were to be a nation that exemplified uh, holiness, justice, and divine wisdom. Worship and service are central to their calling. Worship and service, or avad in Hebrew, became central to the Israelites' identity. Their worship was to be directed exclusively towards God, rejecting the idolatry prevalent in the surrounding cultures. Service in this context meant living in obedience to God's laws and commandments and acting as representatives or ambassadors of God's way of life. Shaped by the Law and the Covenant the giving of the law at Sinai was a pivotal moment in Israel's identity formation. The law provided a framework for how they were to live as a holy nation. The covenant made at Sinai was a bilateral agreement where God promised to be their God and they committed to being His people living according to His statutes. Impact on social and religious life. This transformation affected every aspect of Israelite society from their social justice systems to religious practices, their laws, feasts, and even their day-to-day -day activities were meant to reflect their unique identity as God's chosen people. Conclusion, a journey of transformation. The journey from Egypt to the wilderness was a transformative period for Israelites, shaping their national identity in a profound ways. It was a journey from physical bondage to spiritual liberation and from a lack of identity to being defined as God's chosen people. This identity formation was not just for their benefit but was meant to be a light to other nations, showcasing the blessings that come from living under God's Lordship. Law, Tabernacle, and Sabbath for Israel The Giving of the Law The Revelation at the Mount Sinai The Giving of the Law, a central event in a narrative of the Israelites' journey occurs at Mount Sinai. This momentous uh, occasion marks a di direct communication from God to Moses where the Decalogue or Ten Commandments is delivered. These commandments are the cornerstone of the law or Torah which in Hebrew means to guide or Direct. The Decalogue, a moral and ethical foundation. The Decalogue serves as a moral and ethical compass for the Israelites, providing foundational principles for their conduct. These commandments encompass duties 
towards God, such as the prohibition of idolatry and the mandate to keep the Sabbath holy, as well as duties towards one another, including prohibitions against murder, thief, and adultery. The Torah as a guide for life, the law extends beyond the Ten Commandments encompassing a comprehensive legal and ethical system that governs all aspects of Israelite life. It includes laws about worship, community relations, justice, and personal conduct. The Torah becomes the guiding principle for the Israelites laying the groundwork for a society based on divine principles of justice, mercy, and holiness. The Covenantal Nature of the Law The giving of the law is also a covenantal act. It establishes a formal agreement between God and the Israelites. God promises to be their God and protector, and in return, they agree to live according to His law. This covenant is not just a legal transaction but a relationship with the law serving as the terms of this deep uh, ongoing relationship between God and His chosen people. The Role of Moses as Mediator Moses serves as a mediator of the law, receiving it directly from God and then communicating it to the Israelites. His role is crucial in breaching the divine and the human and ensuring that the law is understood and implemented within the community. The Purpose of the Law The law is intended to set the Israelites apart from surrounding nations, not just in worship but in every aspect of life. It is meant to create community that reflects God's character, a community of justice, compassion, and faithfulness. Conclusion, the law as a foundation for Israelite society. The giving of the law at Sinai is foundational for the identity and society of the Israelites. It provides a moral and ethical framework that guides their relationship with God and each other, shaping them into people distinct in their worship, ethics, and community life. This event marks a significant step in their journey from a band of escaped slaves to a nation under God. The Establishment of the Tabernacle The Tabernacle as a Divine Meeting Place the tabernacle, as detailed in the book of Exodus, is of profound significance in the life of the Israelites during their wilderness journey. It served as a physical manifestation of God's presence and a place where He would meet with His people. The tabernacle was central to the Israelite community, not only as a religious symbol, but as a constant reminder of God's eminence design and construction reflecting divine order the design and construction of the tabernacle were carried out according to specific instructions given by god for to moses this meticulous design reflects a divine order and purpose Every aspect of the tabernacle, from the Ark of the Covenant to the altar and the curtains, was imbued with symbolic meaning and crafted to reflect God's holiness and majesty. The Role of Moses as a Mediator Moses played a pivotal role in the establishment of the tabernacle. As the mediator between God and the Israelites, he relayed God's instructions for its construction and oversaw the entire process. His role highlighted the importance of obedience to God's commandments in maintaining a right relationship with Him. The Center of Worship and Sacrifice The tabernacle functioned 
as the center of worship and sacrifice for the Israelites. It housed the Ark of the Covenant and the altar where sacrifices were made as part of the worship and atonement practices. This ritual were integral in maintaining the covenant relationship between God and His people. A reminder of God's presence and guidance. For the Israelites, the tabernacle was a continual reminder of God's presence, guidance, and protection. It symbolized God willing among, among His people, accompanying them in their wanderings, and guiding their journey. The presence of the tabernacle within the Israelite camp was a source of comfort and assurance portable and central to community life. The portable nature of the tabernacle meant it was always at the heart of the Israelite come, physically representing God at the center of their community life. Its location and mobility were a testament to God's commitment to lead and be with His people wherever they went. Conclusion a symbol of divine human relationship. The establishment of the tabernacle stands as the powerful symbol of the relationship between God and the Israelites. It was a place where the divine and human intersected, where the holiness of God met the needs of His people. As such, the tabernacle was not just a structure but a representation of God's desire to dwell among His people and be actively involved in their, their lives. The institution of the Sabbath, establishment of a day of rest and worship. The Sabbath, instituted as a day of rest on the seventh day, holds a place of significant importance in the life and culture of the Israelites. As outlined in the Exodus narrative and the Decalogue, the Sabbath is not merely a day off from labor, but a sacred time dedicated to rest, worship, and reflection. Significance in the Creation Narrative The origins of the Sabbath are rooted in the Creation Narrative, where God rested on the seventh day after creating the universe in Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. This rest was not due to weariness but served as a model for humanity. The Sabbath, therefore, is a reminder of God as the creator and the sustainer of life. A covenantal sign. The observance of the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between God and Israel. In Exodus chapter 31 verse 13 to 17. It symbolizes Israel's distinct identity as God's chosen people and their acknowledgement of His sovereignty. Observing the Sabbath is a weekly reaffirmation of their commitment to this covenant. Rest and Reflection The Sabbath provides an opportunity for physical rest and spiritual renewal. It is a time for the Israelite community to step back from their daily labor and reflect on God's provision, goodness, and the wonders of His creation. This rest is not just physical but also mental and spiritual offering, a time for contemplation and rejuvenation. Reinforcing Community Bonds the observance of the Sabbath also reinforces community bonds. It brings com families and the community together in worship and celebration, fostering a sense of uni unity and shared identity. It is a time for com communal prayers, learning, and remembering God's deeds. A reminder and liberation from slavery. For the Israelites, particularly those who had experienced the bondage in Egypt, the Sabbath was also a reminder of their liberation. 
It symbolizes freedom from slavery, not just the physical slavery in Egypt, but also from the enslavement to unceasing labor and toil. Societal Rhythm of Work and Worship The institution of the Sabbath introduces a rhythm to Israelite society intertwining work and worship. It sets a pattern that balances productivity with rest and secular activity with religious observance. This rhythm is designed to ensure that work does not become an idol, overshadowing the worship of God and the welfare of the community. Conclusion, a day set apart. The Sabbath is not just a day of rest, but a day set apart for God and community. It is a weekly reminder of God's grace, a celebration of freedom, and a reaffirmation of the Israelites' covenant relationship with God. As such, the Sabbath plays a crucial role. A crucial role. God enters into a covenant with Israel, one holy nation. Israel is God's own establishment as a priestly kingdom and holy nation. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, a pivotal moment in the formation of Israel's identity occurs. God declares Israel to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. This designation sets Israel apart from other nations, establishing from us a people dedicated to serving and representing God. The Bilateral Nature of the Sinai Covenant The covenant made at Sinai, where this declaration of course marks a significant shift from the covenant God made with Abraham. While the Abrahamic covenant was largely lateral based on God's promises to Abraham and his descendants, the Sinai Covenant is bilateral. It involves mutual commitments. God pledges to be Israel's God and protector, and in return, Israel agrees to obey God's commandments and uphold His statutes. Implications of Being a Priestly Kingdom being called a kingdom of priests implies that every Israelite is called to serve as a mediator between God and the world. This priestly role involves worship, adherence to God's law, and living a life that exemplifies God's principles. As priests, the Israelites are to be a bridge between God and the nations, showcasing God's character and ways. The Call to Holiness as a holy nation, Israel is called to a standard of moral and spiritual purity that reflects God's holiness. This holiness is not just about ritual purity, but encompasses every aspect of their lives, from social justice and ethical behavior to religious worship and personal conduct. A Covenant of Commitment and Obedience The bilateral nature of the covenant requires active commitment and obedience from the Israelites. Their relationship with God is not passive. It demands adherence to the law, active participation in the covenant, and a lifestyle that aligned with a holy and priestly calling. Distinction from other nations This covenant sets Israel apart from other nations not just in their worship, practices but in their societal values and ethical standards. They are to be a nation that others can look to as a model of divine justice, mercy, and righteousness. Conclusion, a unique relationship with God. The designation of Israel as a priestly kingdom and a holy nation establishes a unique relationship with God. This relationship is characterized by mutual commitment that shapes Israel's identity, purpose, and way of life. It is a calling that encompasses both privilege and responsibility, setting the stage for Israel's role in God's redemptive plan for humanity. 
the terms of the covenant, inclusion of the law and the Ten Commandments. The Sinai Covenant, as detailed in Exodus narrative, is anchored by the law, particularly the Ten Commandments. These commandments are not just rules but foundational principles for living in right relationship with God and with one another. They encompass duties toward God such as worship and Sabbath observance and duties toward fellow humans including prohibitions against murder, thief, and adultery. The Ten Commandments are the moral and ethical guidelines. The Ten Commandments served as moral and ethical guidelines for the Israelites. They are designed to cultivate a community grounded in justice, mercy, and respect for both God and neighbor. The commandments are not merely legalistic requirements but are intended to shape the heart and character of God's people. The Book of the Covenant, Expanding the Law Beyond the Decalogue, the Sinai Covenant includes the Book of the Covenant Exodus chapter 20 verse 22 to 23 which expands on the laws given in the commandments. This book details various laws regarding worship, social justice, property rights, and community living. It provides practical applications of the principles laid out in the Ten Commandments. Framework for the Covenant Relationship The law, including the Ten Commandments and the Book of the Covenant, provides a comprehensive framework for the Israelites to live in a covenant relationship with God. This relationship is based on mutual commitment. God's promise to be with and bless Israel and Israel's promise to follow God's laws and commandments expectations and responsibilities of being chosen as god's chosen people the israelites are held to high standards of conduct and morality the terms of the covenant lay out clear expectations for their behavior and responsibilities this chosen status is not merely a privilege but come with a duty to live as a light to other nations or exemplifying God's ways. The covenant as a living document. The covenant is not static. It is a living document meant to guide the Israelites through various circumstances. It requires ongoing interpretation and application as they encounter different challenges in their journey as a nation. Conclusion a blueprint for godly living. The terms of the Sinai Covenant, particularly the Law and the Ten Commandments, serve as a blueprint for godly living. They are intended to guide the Israelites in maintaining a healthy relationship with God and each other, setting them apart as a holy nation and a kingdom of priests. The Law and the Ten Commandments Understanding the Law the Torah The Torah as Divine Guidance In the Israelites' tradition, the Law or Torah is understood not merely as a collection of commandments but as divine guidance for life. Derived from the Hebrew word yara, meaning to guide or direct, the Torah is considered the path or way that God has set for His people. It's a comprehensive guide that covers not just religious rituals but all aspects of daily life. More than all aspects of daily life. More than legalistic rules. The Torah goes beyond being a legalistic set of rules. It represents God's will and wisdom for how life is to be lived. The Torah encompasses laws about social justice, community relationships, worship, and personal conduct aiming to create a society based on righteousness and compassion. The Torah as a measure of faithfulness. 
Adherence to the Torah is seen as a measure of the Israelites' faithfulness to the covenant made at Sinai. It's a barometer of their commitment to God and His teachings. Following the Torah is not just about legal compliance. It's about aligning one's life with the divine will. A living document. The Torah is considered a living document relevant to the lives of the Israelites in every generation. Its teachings are not static. The require continuous study, interpretation, and application of the to the varying uh, circumstances of life. This dynamic aspects of the Torah makes it a perennial source of guidance for the Israelite community. <clears throat> the Torah in community life. The Torah plays a central role in a community and individual life. It shapes not only religious practices and rituals, but also social interactions and ethnical behaviors. The teachings of the Torah are meant to permit every aspect of life, guiding the Israelites in their relationships with God and each other. Educational role of the Torah. The Torah is also a tool for education and moral instructions. Its teachings are passed down from generation to generation, forming the basis of communal and familial values. The study of the Torah is considered a lifelong endeavor essential for spiritual growth and understanding. Conclusion, the Torah is a covenantal gift. The law or Torah is much more than a legal code. It is covenantal gift from God to His people. It serves as a divine target for how life should be conducted, providing a framework for living a way that is pleasing to God. Adherence to the Torah is a sign of Israelites' devotion to the covenant. The Ten Commandments Fundamental Laws for a Covenant People the Ten Commandments, as detailed in Exodus chapter 20, are fundamental laws that establish the foundational principles for Israelites' relationship with God and each other. These commandments are central to the Torah and form the bedrock of Israelites' ethics, worship, and social interactions. Exclusivity of Worship you shall have no other gods before me, sets the tone for the exclusivity of the Israelites' relationship with Yahweh, the God of Israel. This commandment is a direct rejection of the polytheistic practices prevalent in surrounding cultures and underscores the uniqueness of Yahweh as the only true God deserving of worship. Commandments honoring God and sanctity of His name. The commandments continue to establish principles for honoring God, including the sanctification of His name and the observance of the Sabbath. These laws underscore the reverence due to God and the importance of setting aside time for rest and worship. Com commandments governing human relationships. The latter commandments focus on human relationships and social ethics. They include prohibitions against murder, adultery, thief, bearing false witness, and coveting. These laws are designed to promote justice, respect, and harmony within the community. The Decalogue as a Moral Compass the commandments collectively served as a moral compass for the Israelites. They provide clear guidelines on how to live in a way that honor God and foster a just and compassionate society. The commandments are not merely religious edicts, but directives for all aspects of life. Role in Covenantal Relationship The Decalogue is integral to the covenantal relationship between God and Israel. 
By following these commandments, the Israelites demonstrate their commitment to the covenant and their desire to live according to God's will. Conclusion, a blueprint for godly living. The Ten Commandments are more than a set of rules. They are a blueprint for godly living. They lay the foundation for a life that is in harmony with God's character and purposes. For the Israelites, adherence to these commandments is a critical aspect of their identity as God, God's chosen people and a kingdom of priests. Christian Understanding of the Commandments Interpretation in the Light of Christ's Teaching In Christian theology as reflected in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Ten Commandments are understood through the lens of Christ's teachings and life. This perspective does not negate the original intent of the commandments but deepens their meaning and application in the context of Christian faith. Catechism References In CCC 2085, this section highlights that the revelation of God to Israel and the vocation of the truth of man are intrinsically linked. It emphasizes that understanding God's nature and purpose is central to comprehending humanity's role and calling. In CCC 2116, this speaks against practical like divination and idolatry, reinforcing the commandment against having other gods. It stresses that seeking power through occult practices is contrary to the respect and reverence owed to God alone. CCC at 2130-2131, these sections discuss the acceptance of of religious images in Christian worship, especially after Christ's incarnation. The incarnation of Christ as a visible image of the invisible God marks a new era where veneration of images or icons becomes an integral part of Christian worship. The prohibition against idols reinterpreted. The commandment against idolatry takes a new dimension in Christianity. The incarnation of Christ signifies that God has made himself visible and accessible in a new and profound way. While the prohibition against idols remains the veneration of Christ, the Virgin Mary and the saints through images is seen not an, as idol worship but as honoring the incarnation of God's word in Jesus. The Commandments as a Path to Christ-like Living The Ten Commandments are seen in Christianity as guiding principles that lead believers to live in a Christ-like manner. They are not merely rules but pathways to imitate Christ's love, humility, and obedience to God the Father. Fulfillment of the Law in Christ Christian teaching holds that Christ fulfilled the law, including the Ten Commandments, through His life, death, and resurrection. The fulfillment is not about abolishing the law, but about completing and embodying its deepest meanings. Conclusion The Commandments in Christian Life In Christian understanding, the Ten Commandments continue to hold significant moral and spiritual value. They are interpreted in the light of Christ's teachings, emphasizing the importance of loving God and neighbor. This understanding shapes Christian ethical behavior, worship practices, and a broader spiritual journey towards holiness and communion with God. The Book of Covenant and Sealing of the Covenant The Book of the Covenant, Comprehensive Legal and Ethical Code 
The book of the covenant as recorded in Exodus chapter 21 to 23 extends beyond the Ten Commandments providing a detailed set of laws, laws and ordinances that govern various aspects of the Israelite life. This collection of laws offers a comprehensive legal and ethical code for the newly formed nation of Israel, societal laws and regulations. The Book of the Covenant contains laws that cover a wide array of societal concerns. These include regulations on property rights, social justice, criminal offenses, and civil disputes. The laws are designed to create a just and equitable society where the rights and dignity of the individuals are protected and upheld. Religious and Ceremonial Observances In addition to societal laws, the Book of Covenant also addresses religious practices and ceremonial observances. These laws guide the Israelites in their worship and ritual, ensuring that their religious practices are in line with the principles set forth by God. Treatment of Foreigners and Marginalized Groups A notable aspect of the Book of the Covenant is its emphasis on their fair and humane treatment of foreigners, slaves, and other marginalized groups. The Israelites having themselves been foreigner and slaves in Egypt are instructed to treat others with empathy and justice. This reflects a profound understanding of the value and dignity of every individual regardless of their social status or origin. Ethical Foundation and Moral Principles The laws in the Book of the Covenant lay down ethical foundations and moral principles that reflect God's character. They call for honesty, integrity, compassion, and fairness in dealings with one another, reinforcing the moral fabric of Israelite society. Integrating Experience with Divine Instruction The Israelites' experience in Egypt significantly influences the formulation of their laws. The, their own suffering and mistreatment in Egypt served as a backdrop for many of the laws, especially those concerning the treatment of the vulnerable. The integration of experience with divine instruction ensures that the laws are not only just but also empathetic. Conclusion, a blueprint for a covenant community. The Book of the Covenant serves as a blueprint for the Israelites as they form a covenant community under God. It provides a holistic framework that governs not only religious practices but also day-to-day -day life, aiming to create a society that mirrors God's injustice, mercy, and righteousness. Sealing the Covenant The Covenant Sealing Ceremony the formal sealing of the Sinai Covenant is marked by a significant ceremony involving the key figures of the Israelite community. This event, detailed in Exodus chapter 24, underscores the solemn and binding nature of the covenant between God and Israel. Participants in the ceremony The ceremony involves Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel. Their participation signifies the involvement of both the religious and communal leadership in affirming and upholding the covenant. This collective participation reflects the communal aspect of the covenant, binding not just individuals but the entire nation. Moses' role as mediator and communicator. Moses plays a central role in this event as the mediator between God and people. He ascends Mount Sinai to receive further instructions and laws from God. Upon returning, he communicates these divine directives to the people, acting as the conduit through which God's will is revealed.
the people's affirmation of the covenant. A pivotal moment in the ceremony is the people's response to the covenant terms. They affirm their commitment to obey God's law saying, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 7, this affirmation is a collective pledge of obedience and loyalty to God. The role of sacrifice in the covenant. The sealing of the covenant is accompanied by sacrifices. These sacrifices symbolize the seriousness of the covenant and serve as a tangible expression of the Israelites dedicated to God. The act of sacrifice also illustrates the concept of atonement and consecration in the covenant relationship. The blood of the covenant, an essential element of the ceremony is the sprinkling of blood referred to as the blood of the covenant in exodus chapter 24 verse 8 this act signifies the binding of life giving nature of the covenant blood representing life symbolizes the life sharing bond between god and israel communion with god following the sacrifices Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders have a communal meal, symbolizing communion with God. This meal, in the presence of God, represents the fellowship and intimate relationship that the covenant facilitates between God and His people. Conclusion, a solemn and binding agreement. The sealing of the Sinai Covenant is a momentous event in the history of Israel. It marks the formulation of the relationship between God and Israel, characterized by mutual commitment and responsibility. This ceremony highlights the gravity and sacredness of the covenant, cementing Israel's identity as God's chosen people and a nation under His guidance and care. Pattern for Worship and the Tabernacle Commandments for Worship and Priesthood Detailed Divine Instructions for Worship in Exodus chapter 25 to 31, God provides Moses with detailed instructions for Israelite worship. These commandments establish a comprehensive pattern for worship, reflecting God's desire for how He is to be worshipped by His chosen people. Altar uh, construction and sacred, sacred space. One of the key elements of these instructions is the construction of the altar, a central piece in the tabernacle where sacrifices are to be made. The design and placement of the altar are meticulously described, emphasizing its sacredness and the importance of proper approach in worship. Ordination and the role of the priesthood. The establishments and ordination of the priesthood are another critical aspect of these commandments. Aaron and his sons are set apart for the priestly ministry, responsible for conducting sacrifices and maintaining the holy rites and rituals. The ordination process involves specific rituals and offerings, signifying their purification and dedication to God's service. The garments of the priests. Special attention is given to the garments of the priests, especially to the high priest. These garments, including the ephod, breastplate, and the turban, are rich in symbolism and designed for beauty and dignity. They signify the sanctity of the priestly role and the honor of serving before God. Regulations for Sacrificial Practices The sacrificial system forms a major part of the commandments for worship. 
detailed guidance are provided for various types of offerings including burnt offerings, peace offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings. These sacrifices are central to atonement and worship, symbolizing repentance, thanksgiving, and communion with God. The tabernacle as the worship center, the tabernacle is uh, described as the dwelling place of God's presence and the center of Israelite worship. Uh, its construction and furnishings, including the Ark of the Covenant, the table of the bread of the presence, and the lump stand, are described in detail, underscoring the sacredness of the space. Regular Worship and Festival Observances In addition to daily worship practices, God's commandments also include instructions for observing special festivals and Sabbaths. These observances are times for communal worship and remembrance of God's actions in Israel's history. The commandments for worship and priesthood as outlined in Exodus chapter 25 to 31 establish a holistic system of worship for the Israelites. This, this system encompasses every aspect of religious practice from the physical space of worship to the rituals and the people who perform them. It reflects the seriousness with which God regards worship and His desire for His people to approach Him in reverence and holiness. Sacrificial Procedures and Regulations Overview of the Sacrificial System In the ancient Israelite religious system, as detailed in the books of of Exodus and Leviticus, uh, sacrifices played a central role in worship and atonement. The sacrificial system outlined in the text provides a framework for approaching God, seeking forgiveness, and maintaining a right relationship with Him. Types of Sacrifices Burnt Offerings or Ola, symbolizing complete uh, surrender to God, burnt offering were entirely consumed by fire, signifying the worshippers' total dedication to God. Sin offerings or chat, chata. These were made for atonement of unintentional sins, helping to cleanse and restore the worshippers' relationship with God. Guilt offerings asha or asham, similar to sin offerings, guilt offerings were made in response of unintentional sins, especially those requiring restitution. Peace offerings or shilamim. This offering symbolizes reconciliation and fellowship with God. Part of the offering was burnt while the rest was shared in a communal meal reflecting communion with God. In grain offerings are minka, comprising grains, oil, and incense. These offerings were a sign of thanksgiving and devotion, often accompanying other sacrifices. Regulations and Rituals The role of the priest The priest acted as a mediator between the worshiper and God. He performed the ritual, slaughter, handled the blood, and burned the offerings according to the prescribed regulations. In handling of blood, blood considered the life force was central to the sacrificial process. In many offerings, blood was sprinkled or smeared on the altar, symbolizing atonement and purification. Procedures for Offering Specific regulations governed how each type of offering was to be presented, including the type of animal, the method of slaughter, and the handling of the offerings part. Purpose of the sacrifices, atonement and reconciliation. The primary purpose of sacrifice was atonement for sins and reconciliation with God. They provide a means for the Israelites to express repentance and seek forgiveness. Communion with God. 
sacrifices, especially peace offerings, facilitated communion with God, both symbolically and through the shared meal aspect. Demonstration of devotion and thankfulness. Offering like grain offerings were expressions of gratitude and commitment to God, symbolizing the worshippers' reliance on and trust in Him. Symbolic Significance Symbol of Christ in Christianity In Christian theology, these sacrificial rituals are seen as symbolic precursor to the ultimate uh, sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His death is interpreted as the final atonement for sin, fulfilling the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. Conclusion, a system reflecting God's holiness and mercy. The sacrificial procedures and the regulations in the Old Testament reflect a system deeply rooted in concept of holiness, sin, atonement, and divine mercy. They demonstrate the seriousness with which sin was regarded and the gracious provision made by God for its atonement. This system was central to Israelite worship and played a crucial role in their spiritual and communal life. Construction of the Ark and Tabernacle The Ark of the Covenant, Symbol of Divine Presence Divine Specifications The Ark of the Covenant as detailed in Exodus chapter 25 verse 10 to 22 was built according to specific instructions given by God to Moses made of acacia wood and overlaid with pure gold it was designed to house the tablets of the law Symbolism The Ark symbolizes God's presence and covenant with Israel. It was the most sacred object in the tabernacle, repre representing God's throne among His people. The mercy seat. Atop the ark was the mercy seat, flanked by two cherubim uh, made of gold. This was considered the place where God would meet with Moses and speak to him. The Tabernacle a Portable Sanctuary Blueprints from God The construction of the Tabernacle described in Exodus chapter 26 and 27 was also based on a detailed blueprint given by God. It served as a portable earthly dwelling place for God's presence. Components and Layout the tabernacle was made up of finely crafted materials including curtains, frames, and a veil, creating a sacred space and that was divided into the holy place and the most holy place, central to worship. The tabernacle was the center of Israelite worship and religious life, housing not only the ark but also other important items like the altar of incense, the menorah or lampstand, and the table for the bread of the presence. Significance in worship and community life. Presence of God among the people. The ark and the tabernacle represented God's commitment to dwell among His people, guiding and sanctifying them. Focus of Religious Activities All significant religious activities, including sacrifices, offerings, and festivals, revolved around the tabernacle. It was a constant visual reminder of God's holiness and the need for the people to approach Him with reverence. Symbol of guidance and protection. Throughout the Israelites' wanderings in the wilderness, the tabernacle was a symbol of God's guidance and protection. Its location at the center of the camp underscored the centrality of God in their lives. Construction as a community effort. Craftsmanship and contributions. The building of the ark and the tabernacle was a communal effort involving skilled craftsmanship and contributions from the entire nation. 
this collaborative effort symbolized the unity and devotion of the Israelites to their covenant with God. Conclusion A physical manifestation of the divine The construction of the Ark of the Covenant at the Tabernacle holds deep significance in the religious life of the Israelites. These sacred items and the space they occupied served as tangible manifestations of God's presence, providing a focal point for and community life. They symbolized the Israelites' unique relationship with God and His continuous presence and guidance in their Bezalel's commissioning, divine appointment and endowment, specific selection by God. In a unique instance of divine selection, God specifically appoints Bezalel to lead the construction of the tabernacle and its furnishings. This commissioning is detailed in Exodus chapter 31 verse 1 to 5. Gift of Artistic Skill God endows Bezalel with exceptional artistic skill, wisdom, and craftsmanship. This divine gifting signifies the importance of beauty and artistry in places of worship and in objects used for divine service. Role in the construction of the tabernacle. Master Craftsman As the chief artisan, Bezalel's role is to translate the divine blueprints of the tabernacle into reality. His responsibility includes overseeing the construction and ensuring that every detail aligns with God's constructions. Creator of Sacred Objects Bezalel is tasked with creating the sacred objects for the tabernacle including the Ark of the Covenant, the altar, the menorah or lampstand, the incense altar. His work is not merely functional but also deeply symbolic, reflecting theological truths. Collaboration with Ahulyab Partnership in Corruptsmanship Alongside Bezalel, God appoints Ahulyab as an assistant. Ahulyab from the tribe of Dan complements Bezalel's skills, emphasizing the collaborative nature of this sacred project, teaching and leading others. Bezalel and Ahuliab also plays the ro a role in teaching and leading other skilled workers. This aspect of their commissioning underscores the communal involvement in the construction of the tabernacle. Significance of Artistry in Worship Beauty and Holiness The artistic work of Bezalel highlights the importance of beauty and aesthetic in worship spaces. The beauty of the tabernacle and its furnishings reflects the holiness and majesty of God. Craftsmanship as Worship Bezalel's work uh, is an act of worship in itself. His craftsmanship, uh, guided by divine inspiration, is a form of service to God, contributing to the creation of a space where God's presence dwells among His people. The Role of the Holy Spirit, Inspiration and Empowerment Bezalel's commissioning is notable for the mention of being filled with the Spirit of God. This empowerment by the Holy Spirit signifies that artistic skill and craftsmanship are gifts from God and are to be used for His glory. Conclusion A Divine Calling for Sacred Artistry Bezalel's commissioning to create the tabernacle and its furnishings serves as the powerful testament to the role of artistry, craftsmanship, and beauty in worship. His work, divinely inspired and skillfully executed, contributes profoundly to the Israelites' worship experience, creating a space that is both sacred and aesthetically inspiring. This commissioning underscores the belief that artistic talents is a gift from God meant to be used in service to Him. Observance of the Sabbath 
reinforcement of the Sabbath commandment. Covenantal significance. In the midst of instructions for constructing the tabernacle and its furnishings, the commandments to observe the Sabbath is reiterated. This repetition emphasizes the Sabbath's critical importance as a sign of the covenant between God and Israel. Divine Ordinance The observance of the Sabbath is not merely a cultural practice but a divine ordinance rooted in the creation narrative where God rested on the seventh day. The Sabbath as a reminder of creation. Reflection of God's work the Sabbath serves as a weekly commemoration of God's act of creation. By resting on the seventh day, Israelites align themselves with the rhythm established by God at the beginning of that time. Symbol of the Creator This rest day is a reminder that God is the ultimate creator and sustainer of the universe and it reorients the Israelites' focus towards him and away from their daily A sign of Israel's special relationship with God, a unique covenant marker. The observance of the Sabbath acts as the distinguishing marker of the Israelites' special relationship with God. It sets them apart from surrounding nations and cultures signifying their unique identity as God's chosen people. Weekly Renewal of the Covenant Each Sabbath observance is a renewal of the covenantal relationship. It's a time for Israelites to remember their deliverance from Egypt and their commitment to follow God's commandments. Rest and Worship Holistic Rest the Sabbath is not just a cessation from labor but an opportunity for holistic rest, physical, mental, and spiritual. It provides time for reflection, worship, and rejuvenation. Communal and family worship. The Sabbath also fosters community and family cohesion. It is a time for the communal prayers, worship services, and the family bonding, strengthening the communal and familial ties. A symbol of freedom, release from bondage. The Sabbath is especially poignant for people who were once slaves in Egypt. It symbolizes their freedom from bondage, not only from physical slavery but also from relentless demands of work. Conclusion, a day set apart. The observance of the Sabbath is a core aspect of Israelite life, serving as a weekly ritual that reminds them of God's creative power, their unique relationship with Him, and their freedom from slavery. It's a day set apart for rest, worship, and reflection, reinforcing their identity as a covenant people and their dedication to living according to God's commandments. Thank you for joining us for episode 6 of our series, The Bible, A Canonical Reading. Today we explore the transformative journey of the Israelites from Egypt to the wilderness, focusing on their formation as a chosen nation and the profound significance of the covenant and worship. As we have seen, the journey from slavery to becoming a kingdom of priests and a holy nation was pivotal for Israel's identity. We delve into the central role of the worship and service and importance of the law and the covenant and how these elements shape their social and religious life. We hope you found this episode insightful and enriching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content. Stay tuned for episode 7, where we will explore the theme of the covenant, the broken, renewed, and the Shekinah. We'll dive into the golden calf incident, Moses' intercession, the renewal of the covenant, and the profound significance of the Shekinah, the visible manifestation of God's presence among His people. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to continuing this journey with you. God bless.